Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, my viewers from all over the world. Welcome you to another soul enriching program of the Anglican Communion Church of Nigeria through the Daily Fountain Devotional Guide. It is our prayer as we meet before the Lord's presence that our souls indeed shall be enriched. Let us pray. Father, we appreciate you for another opportunity given to us to come before your presence and to source strength with which we live our lives. Thank you because by your mercy we are made partakers of today. May your name be glorified. Lord, we come to you with great expectations. Lord, we ask that through your word you fill our hearts. Lord, and grant that your word will come with its power and all the blessings that follows it, so that as we dwell in the insights that your word has for us this morning, that we all shall be blessed. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is Sunday, 14th July. And our topic is Go Extra Mile. Go Extra Mile. Our text is Matthew chapter 14, verses 16 to 30. Matthew 14, verses 16 to 30. And I read, Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. They answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples. The disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. Why he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountain side by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. When he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. The commentary says, true passion is expressed by love in action. In simple reasoning, 
The disciples were not wrong to tell Jesus to send the multitude away. Verse 15. But by faith, they were wrong. Jesus understands our limit in helping ourselves. In time of confusion of thought and hopelessness, he brings solutions from angels we least expected help. It was not recorded that the multitude requested for food, but the way they sat down to eat shows that we are hungry. God will satisfy your pressing needs. Notice how they were all directed to sit down on the grass, irrespective of their personalities. It takes humility to receive special miracles from God. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. In verse 22 and 23, we noticed how Jesus separated himself from the multitude for personal reflection. He often made room in his busy schedule to be alone with his father, develop the discipline of spending time alone with God. It will build your spiritual life. A good leader needs to be competent and compassionate, learning from Jesus. You don't have any justification to abandon people whom God has placed in your position to help. Please, don't send them away. Settle them, especially those who have been with you for a long time. Learn to make out time for retreat and personal communion with God. If Jesus, with all his work loaded, could do it, you can also do it. Let this passage today influence your life decisions. Amen. Looking at the passage before us, I want to believe that the Lord is charging us for three important things. That's what we'll consider briefly before we pray. The first is that we are encouraged, as the topic suggests, to go extra mile seeking Jesus for help. We are encouraged to go extra mile seeking Jesus for help. We just discovered that from verse 13, even though we started our reading from verse 16, that Jesus, having heard about the death of John the Baptist, departed from that town to another. The Bible recorded that many persons from different towns followed him. And the Bible said that these persons actually trekked. They went on their foot to get to Jesus. These people who were meant to know equally, we are hungry. God had to demonstrate the power of the divine over sickness. For many of them were actually sick. So they were sick, they were hungry. Yet, they went that length, seeking for Jesus. And that is why our topic is asking us to go extra mile. Several times, we are weighed down by an apparent delay of what we seek from God. People give God condition. When you pray one week and you're not receiving an answer, most times you are discouraged from praying. Many persons' prayer lives are down simply because their apparent problems are tarried beyond their expectation. But we are encouraged this morning that in all situations, in all circumstances, we should go extra mile seeking for him who has the final answer over every matter, over every situation, over every condition. Do not allow your problem, do not allow your situation to become the reason why you cannot get to where you're supposed to get for your healing, for your deliverance, for your liberation. Blind Bartimaeus had a predicament, but on hearing that Jesus was passing, he started shouting. Even when men were asking him to stop shouting, the Bible said he shouted the more. The woman with the issue of blood heard about Jesus passing through her way. She made a decision. Today, I will not allow her to go. That's what we are asked to do. 
at every point in time. Secondly, we are also asked to go extra mile to help people around us. These people came for help, help from Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus went about doing good. And by the demonstration of Jesus, who is our model, we are charged to know that God is bringing a lot of people, a lot of persons our way in such manner for us to help them, for us to bring succor to their problems. And so it is an admonition for all that you go out this morning, look around you. There are people the Lord has brought your way. We are not living for ourselves. We are living for people. God brought you to become an answer to somebody. God cannot come down here on earth to carry our burdens, our problems. He do that by sending people across to us. So I want to believe that I have people around me whom the Lord has positioned carefully for me to take care of their needs. Such is the same for everybody who is listening to me. If you look around you, there are people who are crying, who are in need, praying to God. But God has actually answered their prayers through you. I pray that as you open your eyes today, as you go about your business today, the Lord will get in contact with you, those persons whom he has brought for you to help. And I want to say that Jesus himself demonstrated this. The, the, the loaves of bread and the two fish with which these people were fed was actually borrowed. We get from John's account in John chapter 6 that Andrew, Philip was asked to know if he's going to get something for these ones. When he could not, Andrew suggested, we have a young boy who was not actually there to make that supply, but they had to get from him what he has for the people. Jesus went a strong mile to die for us. At the point of death at Gethsemane, the burden of what he was to suffer came heavily on him. And then he cried to heaven and said, if it is possible, let the cup pass over. But then he remembered that he was sent for that purpose, for that reason. And so he submitted and bowed to it. He went the way to die, even as a criminal, for our redemption, for our freedom from slavery of sin. If Jesus did that, well, then we are obli obliged to equally go extra mile to do same. Finally, the topic says, go extra mile. And I suggest it's a call to go extra mile in sourcing help from our maker. Knowing that there are people around us who we are to help, even when we have limited resources, even when we know that the dictates of human reasoning cannot project, you know, cannot help us to help those ones. Even though we are constrained by our means and power of benevolence, yet we are responsible for helping them. And at that, I think, our duty should be to seek for help from our maker. For he can make everything possible. Every impossible, he make it possible. I want to say that Esther, he knew that he could not help the Jews when they continued to disturb her, you no, know, to go before the king uninvited for their case. He had to tell them, go and talk to God. Why I do same. And then she went into prayer. She went into fasting to seek help from her heaven. Romans chapter 8 says that the created things are groaning, are crying, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God for their liberation, for their deliverance. Yet, men are incapacitated. And the Bible said, that is why man also cried to the Spirit for help. The help we need can only be sourced from the divine. And that's what Jesus actually did in that passage. Three times, we see him separating himself. From the beginning of the passage in verse 13, the Bible said, he withdrew to a solitary place to pray, to seek attention from heaven to seek support, to seek divine attention. And then within that passage, when the bread was given, he knew that bread could not serve the whole crowd. And then he gave it to heaven. He submitted it to heaven and gave that he prayed. And then God helped out. And after that passage, well, at, the, at the end of the passage where we read, he also went to another place to continue in his prayers. Brethren, it is a call for us to depend on God for all provisions, for all assistance that we need especially when things are not coming forth with which you are supposed to help others. I pray for you this morning. And as you go out, you encounter divine assistance. And God will provide for you that through you, others may be provided for. 
thank you and remain blessed as we engage in obedience to do what God wants from us. Let us pray. Precious Redeemer, we thank you because of this grace to come before you. Lord, we are charged by your word. And then the ability to do it, Lord, cannot come except by your grace. Lord, we seek for your grace so that we can go extra mile to seek you, our Savior, to seek for those who you have called us to help and to seek help from heaven with which to carry out these obligations. These is our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you and remain blessed. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.